Yo, what's Yo. going on? What's episode up? 97. That's like crazy. That's episode 97. That's Damn. like three episodes till 100 is what that is. And a good to, year too. It, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a fine wine that year. We are <laughs> super, super pumped to have my wonderful pal, Brad Cordero. Yeah. Brad is the uh, drummer of the reps. That's the Sainthood reps, if you are unfamiliar. It is. He yes. is the uh, tour manager and does uh, front of house for the incredible Caspian. If you mm. haven't heard them yet, go check them out. Definitely. Um, Brad runs a studio uh, in Huntington, New York, mm. Gramps. And it's like, just what <laughs> else? What else do you do? You do well, everything, don't well, you? <laughs> um, I like to dabble, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I'm definitely a dabbler, for sure, yeah. Love that. Love that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we're, we're super pumped to have you on, talk a little bit of uh, uh, hockey and music. So uh, I'm pumped first, too, man, yeah. Yeah, first thing I want to just jump right into, I know um, you know, it's been a while since uh, uh, St. Hood has had uh, like an actual record out. I know you guys have put out a couple yeah. of singles, and I know mm-hmm. you're writing music. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, what's kind of on the scale for you guys as of right now? Um, so, yeah, we put a couple singles out last year. Um, and we've been kind of just writing sporadically since. Uh, we got a, a handful of tunes uh, um, to work with right now. And I think we're going to go ahead and record a couple and probably put them out. Uh, hopefully, uh this up 2021 not not quite sure there's no real solid plan you know we're kind of free we're kind of free agents right now so yeah um and like you know we're not really a full-time band anymore um yeah, exactly. well as well as far as touring and stuff well like you, know, you still play i mean well if there's ever gonna be shows ever again we're not sure about that <laughs> yeah, exactly. but um yeah no we've been writing and demoing pretty much uh you know consistently for i mean i guess years but you know it goes in blocks you know people's availability and just vibe if, if, if it feels good you know we go with it sometimes we'll have like a long streak of like rehearsing like once a week for like months and then sometimes we won't play for like months you know it kind of comes and goes um but it's good it's like you know it's super, it's like really fun i love all those guys um and uh it's you know it's always a good time um jamming drinking a couple beers you know just yeah. reminiscing about bullshit sometimes you know it's, it's a good time i mean that's that's the point i mean you know that's why that's what the best part of being in a band is like the camaraderie yeah, exactly. and, and hanging out and you know bashing your fashion your instruments i mean you play everything so you know whatever yeah. you're playing <laughs> whatever band you're in yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it's it is a blast it's 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 a lot of fun um you know i've uh i've always kind of gravitated you know even being away from long island like i, I, I kind of always have like my my finger on the pulse of Long Island, or at least I, I try mm-hmm. to, just because there's so much great music yeah. uh, coming out of Long Island, even still. Yes. Um, so I, you know, one of the we, um, you know, just last week we dropped our um, our end of the year episode, and uh, we ended up kind of for time truncating it down to five records for each of us between Mikey and I. But had mm-hmm. we had done ten, um, sh- like without a doubt the that somerset thrower record would have been on that top 10 oh, man, um, i don't yeah. know if you had the opportunity to listen to it yet but i mean like i think they're potentially like the next big thing coming off a of long island I, I feel like they kind of are following the the iron chic footsteps and so much and how they're how they're getting traction i mean they don't sound the same obviously they have a little bit more mm. grit but um i don't know if you've like got a chance to listen to them yet but i really think I, they're oh i have yeah i mean yeah they're great they're awesome band awesome awesome dudes um yeah i think you nailed it um they're definitely you know one of one of the bands on long island right now for sure um we played a show last year was it last year yeah i think last year at amh they, and uh it was like our first headliner in a long time oh and wow yeah. they, we had them play also and i mean they were great that was before this record came out but yeah. uh yeah I, I they're awesome they also where we, we rehearse um derek who's in sainthood um mm-hmm. We rehearse in Long Beach. Derek's um, owner of like a rehearsal rehearsal space, and okay. that's where Somerset rehearses there also. So actually, last time we played, they were there also in the in the other room. So um, mm-hmm. you know, we did a little socially distant what up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, they're great. They you know they remind me a lot of um, some of those bands from the '90s that were just like punk, but a, a little more clever than punk, like. I mean, they really remind me of, I mean, Jawbreaker a lot. That's, that's the first oh, thing yeah. I get fr- from them. And I mean, you know, Jawbreaker obviously is extremely influential and like great yeah. band. So 
Yeah, they're, Somerset's definitely carrying the torch, man. And uh, I'm stoked for those guys. The uh, band rules, yeah. you know. Yeah, they're, sure. they're, they're excellent. And it's just, uh, um, like I said, Long Island is, uh, is just one of those places that uh, they're constantly, you know, producing. And, uh, you know, I guess really probably not Long Island, you know, a little more in the boroughs. But, I mean, the you know, the I'm the Avalanche record that just came out was fantastic, too. It's I just, haven't checked it, it out yet, actually. What was yeah, it called it, again? Uh, dive is what it was called. Dive. All right. Yeah, it's good. I, I, it's good. I, I, really, really I got to add that to my Spotify. Um, yeah. And it, um, it just kind of, like, it makes me a little nostalgic for it. And especially, um, you know, having my, you know, finger on the pulse of the Islanders so closely and mm. Long Island just in general, it just, you know, it makes me, it makes me miss it a lot. Um, isn't it, isn't it such a unique place to grow up guys? You know what I mean? Like it's, it really is, uh, if for better or for worse, you or you love it or you hate it or whatever, but it is like, you know, I mean, I've been touring forever. I've, I've seen so many other suburbs, you know, and yeah. Long Island's different than all of them. Different, mostly different, but also same in, in some sense. But I think you got to be here to under be from here to kind of get it, yeah. you know. So I understand why why you'd miss it. You're you're in Florida, right? Yeah, I'm in Orlando, and uh, it's okay, it's cool. very very different down here now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of transplants, though, from from Long Island, mm -hmm. you know, that I run into pretty often. I run into them either at, uh, you know, through through work or just, you know, through, uh, you know, through meeting people. A lot of people that are, yeah. you know, grew up on Long Island and have kind of taken their, you know, their their Long Island wealth and moved it to Florida to kind of stretch it and that whole deal. Um, it's no income tax yeah, it's, there. Uh, Is that right? Is that is that what it is? No income tax. Or? Uh, correct. Yeah, no no income no income tax. Obviously, the, you know, state state taxes are cheaper. But they get you on the on the tolls everywhere, everywhere you drive is a toll in Florida. Yeah, exactly. If you're if you're doing Florida Florida Turnpike, yeah, every everywhere you go is a yeah. toll. Um, and then I mean, but you want to do that because I four is the other main highway, and you want to avoid that like oh, a plague. Yeah. It's like it's like it can be as bad as the LIE in, during rush hour. Yeah, like but even mm -hmm. worse because it's like not only do you have congestion but you have like the 20 mile an hour where is disney world why am i here congestion you oh, know yikes. people from oregon and california just cluttering up the road so it's it's brutal. in rental cars they've never driven before oh, yeah. oh, so bad. So <laughs> bad. You know, what's funny is my, my my girlfriend's grandma um lives in florida and she we were, she just mentioned the other day how i4 is like one of the most dangerous roads in america oh it's yeah. awful it's awful yeah and, and that's what that's really why it is. It's because, um, you know, there's a stretch of I four that really runs through Orlando proper. You know, like the actual city of Orlando, yeah, uh, which is always congested. And then as you get down to like the Kissimmee area, the Lake Buena Vista area where Disney is, mm -hmm. it's just filled with people that like are like you know their heads are in their their phone GPS is trying to figure out yeah. where they're going, mm -hmm. and you know people are just trying to get through this area that have places to go. But, you know, you, you the middle lane drivers, like I said, going 20 miles an hour, you know, like people trying to cut over four lanes of traffic because they don't realize the Disney exit is is right here. And it's just sounds like a nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it's, <laughs> sounds it, like it a nightmare. <laughs> absolutely a nightmare. But um, I mean, I know you, you get it over in Charlotte a little bit, too, right? Yeah. You know, there, there's always construction. Because Charlotte's mm. just like growing faster it's than it can booming, keep up. Huh? Yeah. It's booming, yeah. so yeah, like yeah. they they've expand the highways and make them like you know wider, and then within a couple of years they're like, wait, this is not wide enough. <laughs> Let's wow. do construction again, and like it's just never ending. So the but, infrastructure can't keep up with the growth of the actual you know influx yeah. of peoples. No, no, it's crazy the amount of people that move here and. So many Long Island transplants, so many New mm. York transplants, like a lot of Buffalo, New York people here in Charlotte. Mm. It's a, it's a cool place. You know, it, it doesn't feel too different than Long Island, even mm. though I'm in the South and like in the Bible Belt, but it doesn't yeah. feel like that at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a cool place. And and the music scene is like very hit or miss. You know, they, they do have some really great venues here that like get the national touring acts, but then some of the smaller ones are struggling right now. As is that where, you know, is that where cat's cradle is? Is that in Charlotte or is that a different part? No, of that's uh, what's that called? Uh, or is that, that changed names or am I dating myself? I don't really no, know. No, no, that still exists. It's like Wurtsboro or something crazy. It's, okay. yeah, well, it's not Charlotte. 
I think we did a Charlotte date on that last minus the bear tour with Caspian and it was awesome. I, I forgot the name of the venue though. I'm pretty sure it was Charlotte. Um, but yeah, um, there's a couple cool venues in, in North Carolina. Um, there's one, uh, I think, is it, maybe it's in Durham. Uh, it's just a kind of a smaller club, whatever, but it's right by that timeout cafe place. I don't know if you guys have ever been there before, but it's like, um, uh, it's like a late night or maybe it's a 24 hour, uh, just like kind of like a country kitchen, um, that actually Michael Jordan went to when he went to college. So you walk in there and there's all like this Michael Jordan memorabilia and everything's like light, light blue and you get like crazy, like biscuits and stuff. Um, but North, yeah, I've had, I've had, I've had fun in North Carolina for the most part, if I can remember. Yeah. It's not like Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Sorry so, for the Ohio people. So I, th- Bradley, I, I'm just kind of curious because before we started recording, I kind of mentioned how we, we have always like run in adjacent circles, but we've never yeah. crossed paths, but um, I'm just kind of very, very common on, on Long Island. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm just curious about like your, your, your musical or origins on Long Island. Mm. So like, yeah, you, you mentioned you're from Huntington. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty sure that's where as tall as lions is from too. Like some of the guys are from Huntington as well. Yeah. Or they went to like St. Anthony's so or something like that. So right. like, when did you start getting into this music scene? Were you going to shows at what was that? The Huntington, wow. uh, what was that? You, you, uh, you mentioned you saw Jimmy Eat World there, Tom. What was that? It was like Sweet 16s were there. There, it was like, uh, oh no, you're talking that's in Deer Park, and that was um, McHale's Catering McHale's. Hall. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was that was in like the industrial uh district of Deer Park. The Huntington, I know we call it, Mi- I call it Michaels, you call it McHale's. I I was, <laughs> was that was that was I wrong all those years? <laughs> um, okay. Huntington, I mean Huntington had the had the CYA um, that uh, the, the, like the Tri CYA or whatever that did shows and, uh, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. Places, yeah, yeah, but um, but yeah, as far as as musical origins, kind of etymology, um, you know, I, I when I started when I probably first met you is when you were playing in in the buddy system, but I know you. Oh, yeah. you've before that so mm-hmm. um, oh, yeah, wow. walk us through, I mean, and how did it how did it start <laughs> geez um i think my first real band that like played like a real show and like did some regional touring i was probably 16 um and it was actually the the band was from like the islip area um and it was called norma's lemon stand it was like a ska band like third wave ska band kind of like okay. punk punk too, you know, kind of like a, you know, in the vein of like less than Jake or something. Okay. And then like some like medley punk stuff. Um, <laughs> that was like my first real band. Um, and we did like, you know, um, some like East coast touring, nothing crazy, like a week or something, nothing ridiculous, but I was pretty young. Um, and that kind of like made me realize like, Oh, I, I, I like doing this. You know, it's, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I was young and impressionable, but they were a little older than me and they were kind of, um, you know, a good influence on, on like, what it takes to like be a band and like this work ethic or whatever. So yeah, from that, I just played in a bunch of other bands um, and, you know, did some touring, uh, you know, Huntington was, was awesome because uh, at least when I first started going to shows, there's so many places to go to a show, you know? Um, I think my favorite place probably was old first church, you know, in Huntington. Uh, then there's a the teen center that was across from my high school um, that had shows all the time. I saw op mop there, like, I don't know. They played, it seemed like they played there every other week on the minor princes. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So just, you know, most of my friends, I still have most of my friends from then, you know, from those days of mm-hmm. just going to shows and playing in bands and touring and stuff. So yeah, I went from like Norma's lemon stand to a couple other bands. Um, buddy system was great. Like, I mean, I love those guys. That was so yeah. much fun. Um, yeah. And then, you know, just a couple other bands bopped around and then like, I guess, yeah, Sainthood probably um, was in 2000. We started playing in 2009. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, we toured for a couple of years and kind of stopped touring around 2014. And since then, I've just kind of been like, you know, playing shows here and there, putting out some songs. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think I went to my first show maybe in like 97, 96. Like I was like, I was pretty in middle school, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and sh- I mean, it was it was it was great. It was such a good community. I mean, it's, it's I think it's still great. It's, you know, a little different. Um, back then, there'd be like a ska band, a punk band, an emo band, a hardcore band, an acoustic yeah. band. Like it was it was a, little, a bit more diverse. I think when it came to the shows, I think shows now are a little more segregated. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but yeah, um, that's kind of where I started cutting my teeth. Um, just, uh, being a shitty kid in the back of a van, just <laughs> not really knowing what I was doing. Uh, yeah. you know, but yeah, I mean, that kind of informed <laughs> where I am now, which is, which is crazy to think about actually, um, this past May, um, was, I was, you know, I think we all have had a lot of time over the past year, you know, to do whatever it is that people have chosen to do while being home. And uh, yeah. I've gone through a bunch of old like sessions and a couple, a bunch, a bunch of really old like hard drives with like cool photos of you know, like my early bands and stuff. And yeah. I came, I came across um, like my the first like big show I played with Norma's Lemon Stand, which is uh, I'm still friends with those guys too, which is which is crazy. They're they're awesome bunch of dudes. Um, and it was in it was in 2000 at this place called the Swing Set in Bayshore, and it was um, a festival uh, called Ska versus AIDS. And, um, yeah, it was May something and it was 20 years ago this past May. I just, I just realized that when I was going through the files and I was like, man, that is crazy to think that it was 20 years ago, but it was an awesome show. It was like, and this goldfish, I think catch 22, like a bunch of like, it was, you know, a proper ska show, but it was great. And it was like, the f it was, you know, it was the biggest show at that point I've ever played. Um, at that, you know, it was probably like five, it was sold out. It was like five, 600 people. And I remember I got on stage and like, I don't remember really the first song at all, like playing it, but I do remember very vividly right, even right now to this day, like the first song seemed like, like a blur. And in the second song, it was like, I came into focus. It was almost like I like blacked out and I was like, <laughs> holy shit, this is so cool. Like yeah. we're playing this awesome show and, and not to get all meta on you, but that may have been like the moment where I was like, I think I want to maybe play music i don't know but it was, it was awesome yeah it was great um i'm not sure if that was too much of an origin story but i tried to condense it no, <laughs> since, I play, it. Since, since i've been playing in so many bands for so many years but that's you know th those are the, the highlights the main points yeah um, absolutely yeah now you mentioned and and tom brought it up too your your uh time in the buddy system uh, mm. uh, really a mm -hmm. deer park band plus you so yeah definitely i guess tell us how that came about you know I'm sure, sure our national listeners have no idea who the buddy system is, but for Tom <laughs> and I, not, that no. that was a big deal. So you know, the, the national listeners should because that that band's uh, that band's awesome before I was in it, and it was definitely awesome uh, while I was in it. No, not to you know toot our horns, but um, oh, yeah, yeah I, was in, I was in I, I was in another band, um, and then uh, that band I left that band or something or I don't know what happened, and Chris Barone. Um, I think reached out to one of the dudes in the, in the other band because I don't know. I forgot who was the drum. Was it was Cody? Was the drummer? Cody. No, okay, well, yeah. It was Cody, no, but I think Chris was. Took, okay, well, oh, he went to. I think Chris went to college or something. Did, I don't yeah. know. I recently posted the last the, the reunion show we played, and I think uh, Chris does a or Dustin does a little monologue about the lineage of drummers, uh, <laughs> and it's actually really really funny. Um, and they were like, hey, you know, um, we played, we, cause we played a couple shows with them. They're like, uh, do you want to come down and jam? We got, we, you know, we got some new songs. Uh, our drummer is going to college or something. I forgot what he said. I was like, yeah, I remember them being cool, cool people. And uh, they sent me some, some songs that I guess there were, there were like new demos um, that ended up being like the part of the EP we did. Um, and I thought their songs are awesome. And, um, I never really hung out with them that much besides the couple shows we played. So we went, mm -hmm. I remember I met them down, I learned a couple songs and met them at a rehearsal space and uh, like it clicked right away. And they were, they were super, super cool people. And um, yeah. So then we got like to work on just like finishing those songs that they had sent us and just we got a rehearsal space. And honestly, even to this day, I feel like that band, um, I spent more time, working on songs maybe uh, probably maybe sainthood i mean but besides but i guess besides sainthood um on these songs you know and it ended up we recorded them there you know and they didn't come out great but they and they, they do songs justice i guess and there's like a couple it's like a five song ep maybe but um mm -hmm. yeah that was maybe 2004 three yeah i can't yeah. I, I can't i can't remember i really can't remember but um yeah, Mike, Dustin, and Chris. Holy shit! They're. I mean, I still talk to those guys pretty regularly. Dustin and I were actually recently in a, another project with Francesca, who's in Sainthood, um, and that kind of just kind of fell apart. But it was really fun playing music with him again. But 
Yeah, we did the reunion show uh, in 2017, I think, at the Brick House with uh, the Toms. Yeah. Right. Which, yeah. which, who I that band rules. I don't know if you guys. Yeah, remember I, stuff, I, that I, band I love, <laughs> love that band, man. It's uh, yeah. Real quick to, to interject with that. Um, yeah, yeah. So the Toms was um, was something that just came together just out of virtue of Tom Waring just having like this music, and he was like. I Talented just, kid, I got to get it out. Kid. You know, I got to yeah, get it yeah. out. And, and I mean, he's since gone on to, you know, start Yes, What We Have, who are fantastic mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that show was very, very special uh, for me specifically, just because, you know, the Buddy System was a band that kind of um, like crossed me as a listener over when I was younger uh, mm -hmm. and like really got me into like playing drums and wanted to be in rock bands. Like, you know, when I was like 14, 15, you know, uh, Cody lived right over on uh, like 20th Street, like right across the, the street from me uh, in Deer Park. And uh, they practiced there and I would just sit in on practices and watch them play. And, and um, you know, really kind of showed me like, oh, that this, you know, this shit is cool. Like, right, music is great and all this mm -hmm. stuff. And I want to do this. And uh, so being a part of that reunion show was awesome. But I very, yeah. very vividly remember it. And I mean, you guys sounded sounded awesome then. And um <laughs> It was it was cool though to to get to have you know to put that together and yeah. to kind of have that come to fruition after all that time was was really a great thing. Now, um, when you so so when you got together, you know, just f flash forward in a couple of years and started yeah started reps right. So mm. um, I know uh, was was Sherm at that time was he still uh, like touring with with brand new or, or had he had been kind of out of that when, when rep started no yeah so st Hood was started by uh chesco and derek um, okay they, they they started the group um and they recorded a, a, a couple songs with sapone because chesco can kind of play everything so um they had a couple demos and um yeah um yeah so neil rubenstein asked me if i wanted to you know he was friends with derek and chesco and said hey go play mm -hmm. with you. go go see if you you know you can jam with these dudes and see how it goes and at the yeah. time actually derek was on tour with brand new yeah derek played guitar uh in mm -hmm. brand new um for a better part of a decade so that was 2009 um and uh yeah they were touring um a bunch um at that point i think it was maybe towards the end of or maybe did maybe that record just came out i can't remember man i have my um <laughs> <laughs> my, I, have, I have odd feelings about that that whole situation, but um, yeah, course, yeah, Derek, yeah. Derek, when when Saint Hood started, Derek was, and for the first you know couple of years, Derek was still a part of yeah. brand, brand new, but they weren't really doing much after like um, they toured a bunch on that record, and I think maybe two thousand and nine, mm -hmm. and then, and then two thousand and ten, uh, he kind of you know I think they stopped they maybe they stopped touring or something, and then that's mm -hmm. when like. Yeah. So yeah, 2009, um, I, <clears throat> Chesco was like, Hey, come jam. So we, we played a bit at that point, Derek was on tour with brand new. And one of my best friends in the world is dude, Yanni, um, who I've played in, we went to high school together. He's like one of my oldest friends. Um, we played a bunch of music together in bands before whatever, um, maybe two or three other bands. And mm -hmm. cause they, there was, it was just Derek and Chesco. They didn't have, um, a drummer or a bassist. So yeah. I asked Yanni if he wanted to come jam with us and uh, yeah, and he did and it worked out. And um, yeah, so Derek, yeah. So answer, to answer your question, sorry if I rambled again. Um, yeah, Derek was still playing in, in brand new and he did up until, uh, yeah, maybe, I don't know, they didn't really, like I said, they didn't really, I think they stopped doing a bunch like right as we started being really active. Uh, we ended up playing a couple shows together over the years and you know, we got pretty close with those dudes and i mean those, those <laughs> shows those shows were always so yeah, sick of course because um, that band's that band has ridiculous fans um, yeah they sure do i rightfully so i mean they're they're you know whatever yeah you know, they're, they're they're still they put out good record they put out some good records and they yeah. were a great are or were a great band but mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so yeah that's your answer your question he was still doing yeah that. so um so then um Something I've, I've always wanted to ask you, and, and believe it or not, I don't think I've ever asked you this question, but hmm. um, so when you guys, you guys released Monoculture on Tooth yeah. & Nail. Um, Correct. So 
uh, I, I guess I've, I've always kind of wanted to ask you what the relationship was like with with Tooth and Nail. I mean, I you know I've been a a huge fan of Tooth and Nail for as long as I can remember with all the music they yeah. put out. So how did that work? How, like, were, did, were you approached by them specifically to put the record out, or did you kind of shop it? How did it? How did that come to be? Yeah, so that's a funny story. Um, so our first release ever was a split with O Brother, who is I don't know if you I, I think you know them. Yeah. Uh, they to me they're one of the best bands to come out of you know, this world that we're talking about. Um, yeah. in incredible band, incredible people. Uh, some of our earliest friends as a band, you know? Um, so we put a split out with them. Um, a song of the, a song that they later put on a record and a song that we've never put out besides that, mm -hmm. um, which I think might be our most <laughs> popular song or something. I don't know. Uh, we've played it a couple of times since. Well, we played it a couple of times in recent in uh, recent shows, but we hadn't played it for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so we put a split out, and um, this is also such a so kind of like crazy how, how all this comes together. But um, so, Oh Brother, um, it came out, I guess, in maybe the fall of 2009. Mm -hmm. The summer of 2010, or maybe the spring of 2010, Oh Brother was playing this festival called Cornerstone Festival, sure. yeah. um, which which is, a, I think, a pretty big like, Christian music festival not that they're a christian band but i think i'm not sure how they got connected with that festival but they they played the festival and um someone who's become a really good friend of mine and my band saint, saint, saint hood and caspian this guy jordan butcher who's like an who's gone on he's an incredible um graphic designer and just artist and drummer he drummed in copeland for a long time and may, overall like he's on the mount rushmore of my favorite people he's an amazing person um yeah. he was working for tooth and nail at that at that time mm -hmm. and uh he saw a brother and if you've ever seen a brother before like you remember seeing them because they're kind of just like one of those bands even back then they're probably were like oh my god this, this band's great jordan's yeah. got impeccable taste in music um amongst other things so uh he picked up hit he picked up that split we did um because that, th that may have been the only piece of uh, music they had for sale I, I wasn't there i don't know but i know he picked that up and um so he so he i guess he he dug our, he dug our side of the split you know that song we put out um and like i said he was working for chase and i guess maybe a and r I, I don't really remember mm -hmm. uh and he hit us up and he's like well what, what, what's what's the deal with saint hood reps like what are you guys doing uh, and, and at that time actually we, we were recording an ep that i was recording um that we were just gonna i was gonna record it Sapone was gonna mix it and we're just gonna i guess put it out ourselves or I don't really, really know what we're going to do. Cause, cause it kind of, that, that process kind of got cut off by this kind of interaction with Jordan. And he were, we're like, Oh yeah, you know, we're, you know, we're this, we're kind of a newer band. Um, and uh, he's like, I really like that, that song that was on the split with our brother. So long story short, they, he was like, yeah, I work a tooth and nail and you know, I'm going to pitch you guys to uh, was it Brandon? I think his name was, uh, mm -hmm to, you know, give you guys a deal or, 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 or you know, or, you know, whatever, whatever those people do to yeah, yeah, yeah. Rec record execs. So yeah, exactly. he did. And the guy was like, I like it. It kind of reminds me of um, maybe the glory days of tooth and nail sort of like moody nineties yeah. tunes. Um, mm -hmm. So they <laughs> offered us a record deal before they ever even saw us play, uh, wow. which um, is pretty crazy. Cause they were kind of like, you know, at that point they were, you know, they had a couple um, good bands, but they had like put out, you know, they did like Amberlynn, like I think uh, Under Oath, like they had yeah. a bunch of they, oh, success. Yeah, yeah so, for um, sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they offered us a record deal without ever seeing us play this just based on Jordan's like, you should not sign this band. And um, they kind of wanted to have maybe like a revival of the label or they told us they kind of wanted to bring it back to the the glory days like oh, maybe maybe we'll bring over some of your friends you know so we kind of we told them about old brother and stuff and yeah old brother went with i think triple triple crown but um yeah, yeah that's how that mm -hmm. started and um they the first time they saw us play actually was the following january i forgot i forgot when we signed maybe that summer 2010 um and um where we had you know we we did a bunch of touring up to that point but we're still a very new band you know um, so it was kind of like, oh, wow, this is, this is kind of crazy. Cause it was kind of against the traditional, like, you know, um, you know, right record tour, hopefully yeah. someone sees you. And like, it just was like, oh, well this right place, right time. Jordan saw this band that we yeah. split out with and he bought the seven inch and was like, 
he, I mean, I'm sure he loved the Oh Brother side, but I guess he was like, hey, I, I really dig this. And um, so because of that, like, I, you know, you know, you know, we got the deal and Jordan uh, just got nominated for a Grammy for doing the uh, the uh, artwork, the layout for the Caspian record that came out this year. So he's done. Jordan's done amazing things since. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm I really appreciate his friendship. And like, it was really cool that 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 all has happened and we're all still friends and it's 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 wild that that happened yeah. but they saw they, yeah they saw us for the first time at south by while we were recording monoculture so the following january we started recording monoculture with sapone and then mm -hmm. um we we left the recording pro we were probably in the studio for a month or two and then we went and did the uh, south by and that's when they actually came and saw us play mm -hmm. and we met the the owner Brandon or Brandon, I think his name was, yeah. and we showed him a couple like rough mixes of the record and they were like all really, really into it. So yeah, they were really cool. That, that label was, was like, um, everyone there was so nice. Um, you know, it was, it was overall like a, a, a awesome experience. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, they gave us, a, they, they let us pick really who we wanted to record with. So that was like really cool for a first record. Yeah. So, not a lot of bands get that opportunity on their first record. So it was cool. Absolutely. And yeah, yeah. Now, Sorry, I guess my question about. is like, you know, when I listen to St. Hood reps, I don't get like the, the Christian vibes <laughs> like that oh, you would yeah. associate so, with being on tooth and nail. Yeah. So that's the thing. I mean, uh, no one in the band was outwardly like Christian at all. I mean, I think some of the guys probably were very like not, <laughs> um, <laughs> and they, they weren't, they, they weren't, bummed about that they didn't care um i think i remember the story like me without you guys telling us one time they made like aaron change a lyric about like pink curtains or something because it was like an innuendo but i don't think it really was an innuendo but they thought maybe people would take it that way um <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> weird story but um yeah. they basically asked us from the beginning like hey listen um you can go like the christian bookstore route uh, if you want, and uh, you'll probably sell like a lot of records just based on that, but you'll be, you know, amongst like Christian artists, which like made no sense to us because none of yeah. our music was, you know, they didn't, we didn't identify with that as, as a band, you know, um, or we, you know, you can go the other route and, you know, whatever, like, you know, the alternative press um, monster or whatever, yeah. <laughs> warp, warp tour type. Yeah you know, thing. And we're like, we don't kind of want to go either of those, you know, I, like they're a good label, but I don't think they ever really put us in the position to like the people who like would like our band to hear, like they never put us in the position for people who would like our band to hear us. Yeah. So we didn't go the Christian book store route. Maybe that was a mistake. Maybe would we, I, <laughs> I mean, I feel good that we didn't, but we would probably would have sold, like you said, we would have automatically sold a bunch of records, which wasn't really that important to us but mm -hmm. to them it was because they were spending all this money on us recording so yeah. um yeah so you know there's like i don't think chesco has ever written a lyric uh with a curse in it anyway mm -hmm. maybe he has I don't, I don't know so that wasn't that wasn't really an issue and they didn't really curtail like really you know our music you know but i i don't remember that there was a pretty a pretty thick contract i think i signed my name like 50 times <laughs> but i don't remember I, i'm not sure if i remember anything about cursing or whatever but that wasn't really an issue they they were really cool like i said and um yeah. yeah so as far as the christian thing like i think we were probably the only non christian band on the label at the time maybe i don't know but that never really you know it was like a conversation and that was it so you know but i yeah. think you know it's What's funny is that you mentioned that is I think the combination of us being on Tooth and Nail and the name of our band very early on, I think people were extremely confused because like <laughs> St. Hood reps on Tooth and Nail. Yeah, and, right? it, and like, we didn't really think about that, I guess, but in hindsight, it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. I think people were probably pretty confused about what we were, you know? Um, you know, it's, it's so, funny yeah. when we're <laughs> talking about, talking about like cursing and stuff. It just makes me think of, um, of, of under oath, right? Because they got into this mm -hmm. like turmoil when, you know, so every, every record they'd done since like changing at times was either on tooth and nail or solid state, right. You know, two pretty much you know, Christian labels for the most part. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they end up coming back in 2018, they put out their new record, which I think they did on rise um, or, or some other label or fearless or whatever it was. Um, One of those, and, yeah. they, and the first single they put out like, within the first 30 seconds of the song, like, like Spencer drops like the most emphatic F bomb. 
like that wow. like you like like and the, and it's just like you got to listen to the song for like the way he says it cuz it's almost like 15 years of like <laughs> being like, I a, can't like, do a, this non, like a non secular <laughs> band all culminates in this one like fucking like I can't even like really <laughs> like the way he says it is just so like just guttural and crazy and it's and it's like yeah but and then like when they got like the the blast back from it like they kind of like said look like you know we we emote the way that we do because you know we're artists like you know yes. I never felt like I needed mm -hmm. to say it until I needed to express how I felt here yeah and mm -hmm. just because I drop like an f bomb doesn't mean that like I'm I don't like I don't have faith anymore like because that was the one Correct. thing that yeah. these under oath fans were that like them because of how they identified then like oh my you know you, you guys are cursing you know you're not for me anymore and it's like well like you know even the most devout people that have faith like sometimes you slip sometimes you cuss like it's oh, like ab absolutely you know? yeah so, so it's just it's one of those things where i i always I, you know when i first heard it even i was like oh wow okay like yeah yeah Mm -hmm. some, some kind of more you feel, you feel you feel the liberation yeah, yeah yeah but um i remember it was like it was like it was like a scandal it was crazy so um and like you know my, my mom Ridiculous. always said my, my mom was one of those people that like she even cursed herself but like whenever mm. i cursed she was like you know i raised you to be an intelligent man you couldn't think of another word to put here that, that my mom the same man yeah better what you you know what you were trying to get across yeah. and yeah. every time like i hear like a blatant like like, like a blatant cuss like that. I'm always like, yeah, what would my mom think? You know, <laughs> so, um, Dude, my mom's the same way. Just don't curse around me. She don't, yeah, yeah. don't curse around moms. You know, I don't know. It's just yeah. what, what does Gail think about that, cursing? No, That's my mom respect. Not a, yeah. My mom would not appreciate yeah. it. She wouldn't yeah, appreciate no grandmas. That. No cursing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no cursing. No, no grandpas. Maybe, you know, if you get, if you get them <laughs> on the right track. But, um, yeah. Yeah. So, Hold on, Todd. Before we shift away from this tooth and nail conversation, I do have another mm. question because tooth and nail does put out a comp that's called songs from the penalty box, which is like a hockey themed comp. Are you familiar wow. with that? I Am guess I not by that? your reaction. No. Oh no. I no idea. That's, yeah. That's and they just like brought it back recently. And, and that it, was my next question. It was going to be like, if you knew why do they, do they do this? Oh, because I, it's like that is kind of me, out yeah. there. Yeah. That's but cool. I, I, I just, no. I, I just was, you know, since you were on the label, maybe you had some insight, but no, it, it's that still, was, yeah. uh, if you want to put us in the right direction of who we could talk to that might know the answer to that question, I'm just curious. Yeah, everyone, everyone who who works for our band and with our band doesn't, doesn't work there anymore. So I don't, uh, I don't know who I would even point you to, <laughs> but that's, that's bizarre. A, a hockey, a, like hockey songs. Like, is that what Not it is? Not necessarily. Like, they were kind of uh, just like kind of pump up songs. Like, kinda, okay. like you know, jock like jams the, or something. <laughs> not like heavier stuff, heavier pump. Yeah. Up yeah, yeah. Like sure. Sure. Songs yeah. That you might... I think the first comp they did was like in like the nineties and it was like, all it was like all the nineties, like uh tooth and nail band. So, you know, like, MXPX and Slick Shoes and like Stretch Armstrong and like all the Frodus, you know, like dude. Frodus. Don't sleep on Frodus. Frodus? I don't. What is yes. that? I mean, no. Okay. I guess I gotta check them out. I don't know. Um, I think but, I, uh, I think I knew. I know you well, Tom. I think you dig Frodus. Give him. A yeah. Spin. All right, man. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take you up on that. But uh, um, right. so now kind of go into like the second part of what we do here. Obviously, talking yeah. a little hockey. So. Of course, um, yeah. Growing up on the island, um, do you remember your first trip to the barn? Do you remember your first game at the Coliseum? I, I don't remember my first game um, in particular, but um, I went, me, me, you know, my dad took me to a, a lot of games at the Coliseum. Um, in fact, I was thinking about this, and um, I've been, now, now that, um, you know, Butch Gorn just got his number retired. Yep. Mm -hmm. I went. I went to that ceremony because um, our boss at the Paramount is. He's. Uh, he's. I mean, he's a hockey maniac. Maniac, yeah. and he's actually. I think uh, pretty tight with Butch, so yeah. he got us a bunch of seats and you know for the game and we watched the ceremony. It was great. Um, I've actually been to a bunch of other ones. Now that I was thinking about it, I think um, Potvin. 
um, Bossy and Nystrom. I think I've been to all, I think my dad, maybe on purpose, we, I remember thinking about seeing those names in the rafters wow. and I went to all, I went to all those retirements. Um, That's awesome. so those stick out, those stick out to me as games. Yeah. I went to, I can't remember like who they played or what, whatever, <laughs> but I can't remember my first game, but I, those are my early Islander memories going to those, um, retirement ceremonies. You know, or, yeah, I think, you know, whatever I think the last time we had Brian Byrne on, he told us some some sort of butchy story. I don't remember what it was, but I think Apparently it had, goes to yeah. the Paramount all the time. He <laughs> does, yeah. He's he, he's awesome, yeah. Um, yeah, he's uh, he's uh, he, he comes to see a bunch of shows, and um, you know, like I said, my 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 boss is a huge Islander fan, so like him being friends with him is like you know a real, real kick for that guy. So um, yeah, I think he he I'm not I guess he lives on the island. I don't know. But um, a bunch, you know, we've had a couple Islanders over the years come come to shows, you know, and um, you know, meet them, say what's up. It's it's always it's always a cool thing, you know. I mean, I'm definitely an, I'm definitely a hockey fan, Islander fan, you know, mm-hmm. way I'm I'm levels below like the Burns or my boss Sean, <laughs> um, like very much, you know. Um, so it's probably much more of a kick than, than for them than it is for me, but it's still cool, you know, because they're just regular people, just like you know, out with their friends. Yeah. Oh, but then we're gonna go play the you know the Canadians tomorrow night. But we're gonna go see this rock band tonight. You know, this is cool. You know, that's great. It's it's, it's actually funny. So yeah, because, I, I, uh, I can't remember my first barn <laughs> memory, but yeah, we had Brendan Burke, who's the play-by-play guy for MSG on our podcast, and oh, cool. He, he just recently moved to Huntington, and he is a, a fan of alternative music, and like went Brendan to Ithaca Burke. College. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you you might be seeing him at your at your establishment once shows are back and safe again. He's a, he's the, he's a commentator for MSG. Yep. Yeah. So hmm. he took, okay. he, he, he works with Butch. So they, they go there. So Butch okay. is more of the commentator and Brendan's more of the play by play. Yeah. He, Butch always has the little like anecdotes. Oh, player it's perspective. It's I, I love that. I love <laughs> it. It's, you know, I think any good sport, any sport you always need that that you know that dynamic of like someone who's really good at calling the game and then someone like well you know back but uh, like chris uh chris weber for the nba he does that you know there's always i think mike green calls the games a bunch and then chris weber will always add or mark jackson will add the player perspective and that that that, that back and forth is like i love that that's that's always like you know kind of keeps you like yeah, entertained and it's your, really focused. It's, your, it's your classic you know like Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby Heenan, it's your classic Jim Ross, Jerry Lawler. Like it's like, you know, wrestling has that. Oh, um, that kind of all... <laughs> I mean, I think I think hockey, like they, you know, there's the stories from hockey are crazy. You know what I mean? Yeah. In fact, one, one day at work last year, my boss Sean, we watched. I think it was the Intimidator. Intimidator. Uh, I think it was called the Intimidator. I know some documentary about Intimidators on on hockey teams. I guess and how you know, you need those to protect your star yeah. players and like all the people reminiscing about like the glory days of the NHL and like some of the stuff they did. It was just like hockey has such a crazy culture attached to it, you know, but I, actually it's funny you mentioned wrestling because later today, actually I'm doing, this is my first podcast I've ever done and it's, okay. it's, it's really fun. Thanks for having me guys on. But uh, I'm, I don't know if you know, I mean, you know, Rick, um, Rick Jimenez, he has a, yeah. uh, the slashers and thrashers or thrashers and slashers. Yeah, great, great show, he, asked, he, asked, he, he asked me, he asked me to be on it. So oh, it's it. really cool. So, I mean, I'm really close with Rick too. Cause he worked at the Paramount for a while and yeah. um, I had to watch WrestleMania 26. Um, <laughs> I think it was 26. Um, and I, you know, I watched wrestling growing up, but yeah. you know, like very casually and mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, he, he, you can ask him any question about any wrestling match maybe ever like oh, yeah. who won, who won mm-hmm. Royal Rumble in 1994, and he will tell yeah. you, and you can fact check him, and he'll be right. So I was like, he's like, uh, ha- I had to watch um, the yeah WrestleMania, and it's actually it was actually pretty cool to like kind of reminisce and like watch uh, something I haven't watched in you know twenty yeah, something years. When the Kings of the Ring, when <laughs> Kings of the Ring used to do shows, um, mm. we would always we would do like trivia beforehand, and we always had to like <laughs> not officially unofficially but also officially like ban rick from like being part <laughs> of the trivia because like he literally knows so much about wrestling that it's like crazy we, we knew like if we like opened it up to him like he would get every answer right and he would just win every trivia contest yeah. that we'd ever done oh, yeah. so we always yeah. had to be like yo do you, 
you just gotta you gotta <laughs> maybe you could be the maybe maybe you can just be the the fact checker but you can't play dude, dude so he, it's not, not he's he's a, he's a trip man i um yeah i I've I've been listening to his podcast for a while and I and I just yeah. I, I love it and I mean anything that has to do with wrestling I love but I mean it's uh it's just so much fun so I, I hope you have a blast doing it um, but um, yeah I mean it's, it's I think it's akin to yours you guys do the sports and the music thing and you yep. know it's, it's and, awesome. yeah and he, and he yeah. does the crossover between wrestling and music to which there's a, for both there's a huge crossover between hockey and music and wrestling and music oh I, definitely especially definitely. in America both of them being very kind of counterculture sort of deals um. But the one thing that we've, you know, we've noticed through doing all these episodes, me and Mikey, is um, we, you kind of like as you go along, like you uncover more and more that you didn't realize, um, you know. So for us to find potential guests, a lot of it is usually just, you know, kind of like, you know, we we sort through like Facebook and Instagram and see if any of the bands we like, you know, make hockey posts or any of them are wearing like a jersey mm. or a sweater or anything. But yeah, it, it's kind of gotten to the point where like you know, people will like reach out to us that like, we had no idea our hockey fans and are like, Hey, like been listening to your podcast. Totally cool. Like, you know, this that is rules, the band. And, you know, we, we had someone, mm -hmm. believe it or not, uh, reach out to us. Uh, we did like probably 15 or 20 episodes back. He's from Australia. He's actually from Australia, but he's a they huge in Australia. So they they do. Do. Yeah. They do. Um, and, uh, but he reached out to us. He was like, yeah, he's like, well, I'm probably the only Australian you'll ever talk to that happens wow. to be in a band that also likes, um, that loves hockey. So, I mean, like, it's crazy. That's a weird combo. <laughs> yeah, super weird combo. But um, yeah. um, just getting back to talking about, like, Australian stuff. So uh, in, in the touring that you've done with with reps, have you guys ever gotten, like, across the pond and gone to Europe and stuff with reps at all? So it's, it's funny. Um, once, and it was yeah. – uh, you know, we had a bunch of offers back when, uh, when we were touring a lot, um, like a bunch of European offers, but this never made sense for us, whether it was the bands or like the money, because we were like a small band and like, it just didn't make sense. So we never really took the opportunity to do it. Maybe we should have, but we just oh, kind of always passed on those. But, mm -hmm. um, a couple of years ago now, um, Caspian, we were doing a, a European tour and a bunch of festivals and, uh, we had this idea, um, to have it was Caspian and Cloakroom, which was okay. that was a really fun, a really fun tour. Yeah. And I think we were just bullshitting and we we're like, yo, let's let Sainthood, let's play the London show. And Phil and and the cool the cool thing about Sainthood and Caspian is we did our second tour ever with Caspian in two, in yeah. January 2010. So we've been friends, dear friends, like as a band and personally, you know, we've been fans of their band and they've been fans of our band the mm -hmm. entire time. Um so much and so that Yanni well, at one point left Sainthood to be in Caspian full time. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, we had we have a really good friendship, um, and um, they were they asked us to. We had this idea like, hey, let's have Sainthood play the the London show because it was going to be a great show, and we had ne Sainthood had never actually been to Europe, which is kind of crazy. All yeah. our friends had, but like I said, it kind of never really made sense for us, mm -hmm. and. Um, we went over there and we just played that one show. We, like me and Yanni were already on tour um, with Caspian, obviously. And uh, mm -hmm. so Derek and Chesco flew over and, um, you know, we shared a bunch of gear and played at the Dome, I think, in London. And it was it was Sweet. awesome. It was so much fun. Yeah. So, yeah, we never, Sainthood never got over there except for that one show. We never, never did a proper tour mm -hmm. or a festival or whatever. But since I've been touring with Caspian, you know, they go everywhere. We go everywhere pretty much. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're over there a bunch. Um, you know, we were, this year was going to be so crazy. Uh, you know, they just put a record out in January that yeah. is really, really good. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's, we had all this touring lined up and just like everyone else who does what, what I do, um, yeah. you know, just the bottom fell out and we've been yeah. kind of sitting and waiting until yeah. then, but, um, they have some dates booked for next year, uh, with Cult of Luna, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. Hopefully mm -hmm. everything goes kind of how we hope it goes and we can start going on tour again. But yeah. So yeah, to answer your question, now Santa never really got over there to tour, but we're there pretty often with Casper. So. Cool. Now, now Bradley, um, hold on. Yeah. You, you, uh, hmm? Bradley, you have played yeah. a few of the reunion shows for Envy on the Coast, right? Um, or were, were you planning on going out on no. tour with them when they were doing the trio store? 
No, no, no. Santa, no? Okay. Did, did, no, Santa, did, did we play with? No, I don't think Santa ever played with Envy, actually. Um, we played with their, Ryan and Brian had a band called North Korea. We played a bunch of shows with them back back when. But no, Santa and Envy on the Coast never played together. Um, but yeah, it's a bummer about that tour, man. People were, were really, really stoked to to see those two bands play together again. And I mean, you know, like I said, Brian, me and Brian are extremely close. So we were talking about that for a while. And yeah. they put a lot of a lot of work into it. A lot of you know, it's a lot of a lot of headache that goes um, on behind the scenes before a tour even happens. And like being a tour manager now, like I've you know, I always knew that, but having to do it, having me to do it now, having to do it yourself now is uh, it's really eye opening. So I don't think really Brian, I don't think they really had a tour manager or a manager even. So he was, I think he was kind of doing. Him and Ryan were kind of doing everything themselves. Yeah. So it put all this work into something, you know. Um, I was doing the same thing. I was advancing this tour with, with Maserati and pianos become the teeth and it's all this email back and forth and, you know, just for everything just for the bottom to fall out and just like, Nope, got to throw all those hours of work away. Cause it doesn't ha it's not happening. You know, mm -hmm. I can't imagine what it's like to, you know, basically 10, you know, I think they did their tour 10 and VN trio. So that tour 10 years ago. So all this like hype and build up to it. And then like, you know, to finally make this announcement and they had like a bunch of video like you know teaser videos or whatever and then it's like actually no we're not doing it so yeah bummer yeah. total bummer i mean maybe they'll do it again i don't know but um i know brian and ryan are really busy with the violent joy stuff which is yeah. sick so i'm, I'm stoked i'm stoked yeah. for them yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so tom did you you were going somewhere and i cut you off i'm sorry i was just curious no. about that this is this is fine this is this is what you do to me <laughs> you, you, you look like um, sure the, professional. the one question I was going to ask, uh, Tia is, um, so as far mm -hmm. as, as Caspian is concerned, are there any, mm -hmm. like any hockey fans in Caspian or, oh yeah. Like, yes. Okay. So, so, um, so yeah, they're, they're from new, they're from the Boston area. Um, okay. big up, big up to Beverly, North Shore, dude. That's my, that's my <laughs> really bad, really bad New England accent. Um, but, um, so Johnny who plays guitar, in the band, one of there's three guitars. He's one of the guys. Um, he actually, he was actually born in Washington, DC, which a very okay. small percentage of the population is actually born in Washington, DC. Oh, I just mm -hmm. got a 20 battery remaining. Damn. Sorry. Um, so he is caps like crazy through and through really Sweet. funny story. Actually, when they won the Stanley cup, like the moment they won, they were, on, we were doing a show at Vitus. They were playing like one of their records. I think, uh, uh, he was on stage playing, and his wife Jenna goes, "Johnny, they won!" And it was like dead quiet in between the song. <laughs> and if you've ever seen Caspian play, like you know, there's this big thematic, like big, you yeah. know, cinematic. Sorry, like you know, lights and sound, yeah. and then it comes down. You know, mm -hmm. the crowd claps, and then there's like a moment, there's moments of silence. You know, yeah. just like maybe they're fiddling on their guitar, or there's some reverb or some sample going, whatever. Mm -hmm. And in that moment is when she yelled it at Johnny, dead <laughs> silent. And I remember Johnny has his head down, he's tuning his guitar, and he's like, he just went like this. Like, the, like you know, the moment they actually won the game. But um, another, another actually hockey moment that happened on tour with that was when Tavares scored that goal against, against uh, the Capitals. Is that to knock them out, I think, and actually go to the third round for the first time or second round for the first time in a while? Was that against the Capitals? I can't it remember. It was against the Panthers. The Florida oh, against the Panthers. Oh, damn. Okay. Oh, sorry, mix that up. But we've had a we've had a couple of really good like hockey moments uh, mm -hmm. on, on tour. But he is, yeah. Johnny is is a diehard Caps fan. Like, no, not um. I don't think really anyone else. In, oh, you know what? Sorry, I should. Justin, the drummer. He uh, he's from Colorado. He's a big Abs fan. He's an Abs fan. They, so they're always watching hockey on tour. You know, on someone's phone, like they're up. Drinking beers, watching, hockey, and, and that's, that's, what, I was, on tour, that's so. what I was kind of alluding to. Like, have um, being that like there are other you know hockey fans in the band and stuff. Like, has Caspian ever being out on tour tried to you know like, well, I guess now now that you're TMing, but, but like before them when you were just doing front of house, like, have you guys ever tried to work it out so that you can have like an off day somewhere where you can catch a game or something like that? Is that something you've ever been able to do on tour? <laughs> so not hockey. We haven't caught a hockey game. Um, uh, I, you know, now that I'm tour managing, that would, that would actually be way more fun to try to logistically pull <laughs> off. But we actually, yeah. um, we were we were in Denver a couple of years ago. Um, was that the Andro tour? No, that wasn't. Uh, I forgot what tour it was. And um, 
we had we had sound checked and we had some time before doors and the venue was around the corner from Coors Field. I mean, like a block. Oh, so sweet. we we're like, yo, let's go, let's go watch a couple of innings of the of the Rockies game. You know, yeah, sure. whatever. It was cheap. You know, bleacher tickets were like eleven bucks or something. We got yeah. a beer and went over there and watched a couple of innings of the game, and it was really really fun. Yeah. Um, but we haven't had a chance to go see a hockey game. No, that I mean, I'm sure. I mean, Johnny and Justin would probably lose their shit if we can make that happen. And maybe, you know, I'll bring it up now. I'll bring it up to the guys and see what they think. As long as there's beer there, the guys will have a good time. So, we, <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah, they, I mean, yeah, they're, they're, a couple of guys are generally generally sport guys, nothing crazy. But I think Johnny and, and Justin are like hockey, hockey guys, you know. Awesome. Now, for sure. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. In Huntington, are you aware that there is an Islanders themed deli? Right on Jericho Turnpike now? You know, someone just told me that recently, and I know the owner. Uh, I think the Rosners own the deli. Mm-hmm. And, yep. um, yeah, I mean, I know I've known Mike and his brother. They, I grew up in the same neighborhood as they, they did um, okay. in Huntington. So I've known them forever. Uh, I haven't actually been there, um, but I know I, I've driven past it a couple times, and it's like a uh, – so what's the name? It's a uh, Blue, Blue Line Deli. Yes, the blue line yes, deli, blue yeah. line. I knew it was something like that. Um, yeah, I think that's 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 really really cool. That's awesome. Um, I my, my dad, you know, still is still lives over in that area, which is uh, you know, kind of western um, South Huntington, and um, he goes in. I think he goes in there a bunch, and you know, he's an Islander fan, so I think that's that's really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hockey yeah, themed yeah. uh, deli. <laughs> now, are like all the, are all the sandwiches like named after Islanders? Is that like is like pretty much yeah. It's like the Cal Clutterbuck, like just like the most Italian like sandwich that you could get. Hey. And like, and like the Roth Johnston is just like a piece of bread with like some blood and teeth on it, and like there's and no the bar- will be just a, a the, the Barzal will just be a poutine hero, right? <laughs> yeah, realistically, the, the Barzi is just like an empty an empty piece of bread right now because we haven't signed him, so technically we don't even know. Oh God! Oh um, damn! Really? Yeah, yeah. man. Oh shit. Uh, I'm out I mean, of loop, man. Damn. So when you, it's funny. So I'm the more emotional Islanders fan, and Mikey is the more like r- realistic, pragmatic Islanders fan. So like, Mikey's sitting here, like you know, cool as a cucumber. Like, yeah, they, they, they're gonna make a deal. Don't worry about it. They're gonna make a deal. And like, I'm sitting here, like looking at cap friendly, just being like, how are they gonna make this deal? There's no fucking money. What are we gonna do? Mm. He's gonna walk. He's gonna he's gonna go to the devils. He's gonna go to the capitals. And Mikey's like, you're, you're you're being an insane person. And I'm like, you say that now. You say that now. But I, I don't know. I don't know. So it's just like, you know, this, I, like it's, I'm glad you brought this up because I I, I mean I I'm the, like I said I'm an Islander fan. I mean yeah. I'm like I said I'm I'm not you know I'm not a burn level. I'm you know <laughs> a, a low level hockey fan. I watch a couple games. You know we'll yeah, go to yeah. a game every now and then. Yeah. I, I enjoy hockey, but I'm not like you know I'm not a diehard. Like I, yeah. I, I, I you know. I'd be lying if I said that. I'm not, not going to be a poser here. But I, I know enough about hockey. I've watched enough hockey. I played hockey growing up. Um, I have a I have a real big bone to pick, actually, with – I mean, I'm an Islander fan, but with Islander fans. And I think – you guys might disagree with me here. Um, I'm sure you will. But everyone made such a big deal, like a ridiculous onslaught on Tavares when he left the Islanders, right? Mm-hmm. But – like you got to think about it practically, right? This is how I always, you know, anytime I ever talked about this with my boss, he would like grab his hockey stick and like be real pissed <laughs> off, right? The guy grew up in Toronto. He had Maple Leaf bed sheets. Of course, you gonna he he gave he gave how many years to the Islanders of mm-hmm. amazing service? Yeah, he played his heart out. He did what he could. They couldn't mm-hmm. put a team behind him. That was it. Yeah. So he's like, I have this chance to go home, play for my home team. Have a better chance to win a cup. I'm one of the best players of my generation. Yep. It makes complete sense. And then mm-hmm. have all these Islander fans to shit on him like he was nothing is like, it's like, I understand you'd be upset. Then, yeah. you know, Cavs fans were upset when LeBron left Akron, but like, or we left, sorry, Cleveland, but like, he did what was best for him and his family. And if you can't see that, then I think you're a little thick headed. You know what I mean? Everyone yeah. has this chat on JT. It's like, I don't know, man. I, I get it. I'm bummed. I wish he stayed because imagine him and Barzal now would be. Yeah, exactly. Or did they play? Did they? Did they play the same position? I can't. Yeah, remember. they're both centers. They're both centers. Okay. Yeah. And, you know the, the the thing about it, and we've talked about it on a couple of episodes, and but it it really rings true. So, 
I'm you know, Mikey and I are not the Islander fans that like you look at when you look at the the Tavares debacle because you know when you look at it in hindsight, the number one thing is had Tavares had never left, Barzi wouldn't have stepped up as you know being the next superstar of the team. That's number one. Now, even though you know he's, this, he's one of the best players in the league, if you ask me, I, yeah, I no, think the way he the way he swirls around the ice, dude. Is- and, yeah, no, I mean, yeah. Barkley's fantastic. He, I, I think that this last playoff series, he didn't quite show up the way we anticipated he would. So I think this being his, you know, if if you believe what, what a lot of people believe, which is, you know, Barzi is going to sign with the Islanders on like what they, you know, what they call a bridge deal, you know, short, small amount of money, just yeah. to, to say, okay, here's some money, show us what you can do. And then as long as you are the player that we think you are, we'll lock you down for, you know, nine or 10 million per year once we have the cap space. Right. So I think that's the idea. Um, but Tavares leaving gave Barzi the opportunity to step up as a player and, yeah. and, and then they were able to build around Barzi. And you saw like all these guys who kind of took a back seat to Tavares being the kind of generational player Tavares is guys like Bovillier mm-hmm. and, and Bailey and, and, you know, all these guys who were on the team, who now had the capability to shine more. So looking at it in that, with that perspective, Tavares leaving was, was a godsend. Now I think a lot of Islanders fans were angry because of the way that Tavares left, because, you know, up until a couple of weeks before he left, it was like, you know, he was like, Oh, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I, you know, blue and orange for life, like this and that. And, you know, I think had he, had he had been more, earnest about it we may have been able to get something more for Tavares well, yeah but it's a, yeah, it's a business you don't know yeah. it's, a, it's a business you know he's got an agent he who has to worry about taking a percentage he's got exactly. to say the right thing it's so yep. easy to sit back here and and you know um play armchair part right? these, these, these yeah. the, the athletes you have yep. no idea what they have to go through you're right you're right you, you, you say the wrong thing they might piss exactly. you, you don't know when you yep. when there's millions of dollars at stake you mm-hmm. got to say the right thing and please the right people you're right, right. so like I don't, I, I, it's, it was a bummer. It was, it was annoying. And I can see someone who's a diehard Islander fan, like thinking he stabbed us in the back, but like me, who's a casual fan that only makes sense. But Mm -hmm. I want to go back to what you said about the um, Barzell and the playoffs to me. Like, I think that lightning team was crazy. Like every time, every time Barzell touched the puck, Puck, sorry, Puck. He was swarmed. He had yeah. he couldn't do anything, you know. Yep. And when you when you neutralize a player like that, sorry, my phone. I'm gonna plug my phone in because my phone might die. When you neutralize a player like that, who's the center focus of the team, you kind of mm-hmm. leave them, you know, kind of, um, you know, sort of. Uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Yeah, sure. You know, yeah, kind of limp. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah. on on top of them neutralizing Barzal, and then was it Varlam? Var, who's the goalie? Uh, Var, Var, uh, yeah. 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 I mean, to be honest, I've been watching hockey my, most of my life, and I don't know if I've ever seen a goalie like that. Like, that dude is just an animal. So yeah. they couldn't put anything past him, and they neutralized Barzal. So, like, I don't know really if you can judge signing Barzal or not off of that uh, off of that performance because the, mm-hmm. I think the Lightning's strategy was pretty clear from the beginning. Yeah. Don't let this guy get the puck. And when he gets the puck, just swarm on him. And even they did that, and he was still, like, the way he maneuvers around the ice, man, it's like a figure yeah. skater. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. So like I mean, if you give him another player to play with, or you know, uh, you know, is is Eberle on his line? I, I don't know. I don't know the lines. I'm sorry. I'm not like I'm not that level. Like I said, hockey fan. But I know he's another great player they have. Or is he still on the team? Or is he gone? Yeah, yeah. So I, I really think what it came down to and why Barzi didn't have crazy numbers is that Anders Lee also his shooting percentage was like way lower than what it normally is, where like. Anders Lee is the guy that's in front of the net getting all those like dirty goals, the garbage goals, as we call them. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And like this year, like puck luck just wasn't in Anders Lee's favor. Like his, yeah. his shooting mm-hmm. percentage was like career low. Like mm-hmm. he was taking all those high, high uh, percentage shots, but they just weren't going in. So mm-hmm. like that, that, and, and Matt Barzell isn't a, a goal scorer. He's a, he's a playmaker. a playmaker. So like, right, right, right. right. So like, Barzi's numbers took a hit because Anders Lee's numbers took a hit. So like, you know, okay. I, I really think, you know, first of all, the NHL, they watched so much tape. A lot of these teams have been watching years now of tape of Matt Barzell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, his, and the secrets out the secrets yeah. out. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna plug my phone real quick, guys. Sorry, hold on a second. Sure. Sorry if the audio is different now. I'll I'll sit closer, but my phone was gonna die. No, that, no, that's no, that's good. We actually um we're probably gonna uh I have an old ass phone. <laughs> no, you're fine. Well, you know, we we we'll, we'll ask you one more question just because we we've been at it about an hour now. Um right so so, or, or maybe two last questions, but my last question to you, just because sure. I'm always, I'm always a sucker for a good story. And I know, yeah. uh, the Paramount, uh, has a lot of good stories. So, you know, from your tenure work in there, do you have any, any like ridiculous yeah. Paramount stories that you can tell without maybe implicating anyone too badly? Uh, too, I mean, too many dude, but like, uh, <laughs> I know I can't say most, probably most, mostly all of them. Um, <laughs> Uh, let me think. Um, let me think that one, that one that would work, uh, really, really well. Um, uh, you know, we just, we, you know, we always working with all, all kinds of crews and all kinds of bands, you know, we meet, you know, we don't really ever really meet the artist. That's not really what we do in production. Yeah. Like most artists, like we don't really care to meet anyway, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, we, sometimes we'll play wiffle ball. Uh, in between like we'll load in the show get everything set up we'll have some dime downtime so the boys and me will play with a ball in the alley um which is really which is awesome because it's kind of like you know we had nothing really to do we're on standby we say yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so you know so we get um we, last year we had a residency with jim brewer who's a you know big met guy big sport guy yeah. guy and um I think one time he, he, we were playing with a ball and he kind of just was like walking, you know, he, he'll interact with us, but like, you know, he kind of keeps to himself. We'll play with a ball and he kind of walked down and grabbed the bat. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm either he pitched or he hit or something. Uh, I don't remember, but it was cool. Cause like, you know, he always has a bit of a met bit in his, um, his, uh, his act. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, just kind of like, you know, seeing that dude as a kid, like in half baked and now kind of like, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't say we're friends with the guy, but like, you know, we've yeah. worked so much with him that he's kind of like, just like a regular, you know? Yeah. So I do, I, I do monitors at the Paramount. Most of the time, mm -hmm. sometimes I'll mix the show. Um, I'll mix the front house show, but I mostly do monitors on stage. So I'm always like feet from these people. Right. Um, so I, like, you know, it's just crazy to see someone like that. And I'm just like only a couple feet from them. But um, mm -hmm. I actually, one of the, you know, I do have a pretty cool story. It's not really a story. It's more of like a, um, just like a little moment. Um, I uh, and I have plenty of these moments, but I can at least speak on this moment because it's not really like crazy, which is kind of a cool moment. We had Action Bronson a couple years ago, and oh, um, I love that man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, I love that. His yeah, he's he's really cool, man. He's his really documentary, cool. his food documentary. Oh, it's so good. I haven't seen it. Yeah, uh, so it's called it's called Fuck That's Delicious, and it's oh, so like good. It's, I, oh, I've seen it. Is that like a is that a show or a yeah? It's like a, a show okay. documentary kind yeah, of. Well, actually, I, you know, I have like two quick Action Bronson stories. The first time he played, um, you know, he's like a food guy, right? So as, as you just mentioned, he, yeah. uh, he, I, you know, he did soundcheck or maybe he didn't do soundcheck, but he was backstage and he kind of, kind of was asking everyone like, what's the place, what's the best place in town to eat or what's the nicest place in town to eat? And um, there was, at the time, there's a restaurant across the street called Red. I don't know if it's still there anymore, but uh, he's like, all right, give me like three of everything from that restaurant. So after the show, <laughs> we get back to the like, there's like this crazy spread of food for this guy. Like, it's like fine dining place. And he's yeah. there, he's, like, you know, hanging out with his boys, like smoking or whatever. Um, and that was like, yeah, he's just like a chill dude. And then recently, the second time we had him recently, I was, I was on stage you know, doing monitors for him. And typically doing hip hop uh, monitors for hip hop show isn't like really exciting because it's just like, okay, beat really loud, vocals, whatever, because there's like a backing track. But, He's actually like, he's like I, I, I'm not a huge hip hop person, but I, I, I kind of dig him. Um, and doing sound, doing live sound is a thankless job most times. You know, people don't really care. They only know us if it doesn't sound great. Yeah. They never, they, no one really ever thanks you if it sounds good. And they don't, like, doing live sound is in some places, you know, pretty tough, you know, to make, make a band sound good or, you know, just to work. Um, but that's your job, you know, to, you know, fight through the difficulties and make it sound good anywhere. But um, so I was on stage doing monitors for, for action and, uh, you know, he's finishing his set and like, you know, he's doing his like little like, I don't know, like walk off. He's like, yo, everybody get up for the sound, man. Like, you know, like, you know, <laughs> like he, he, he's like, yo, it sounded great or whatever. And he comes over to me and he gives me like a dap and a hug. And like, you know, he is. A, he, I mean, he's 
I mean, if he's following Instagram, he's like been getting in shape. He's losing some weight. Oh yeah, yeah, he's, he's losing a lot of weight. Over, I was like, yo, that's really cool, man. They came over and said, like, you know, gave me a, yeah. a shout out, and like someone I know was at the show, I think, and they were like filming that moment, and they happened to capture that moment on film. And it was it was just cool. It's like one of those little like you know I don't know moments that you kind of remember. Yeah, I mean, I've, heard, I've heard um, I've heard actually Bronson like will like throw like steaks into the crowd. He just like <laughs> throws like cheeseburgers into the crowd. I've you know, seen he him goes into the crowd. He goes, you know, the first time he played, um, actually, you know, it's funny. The first time he played the Paramount, I actually did front of house. I mixed him, which that was really mm-hmm. fun. I was actually one of the first bigger artists I got to mix there. Yeah. And he came out into the crowd and was walking around and he actually like had a wireless mic and he's walking through and he walks right past me, like behind the console. And like, you know, <laughs> he gets security following him and people are going nuts. And it's like, yeah, he's just like a big He's like a good vibe, you know what I mean? He's like a yeah, you know, oh yeah, people love oh yeah. to see him play. So yeah, he, he didn't throw any steaks into the crowd that night, but he went. Into the crowd <laughs> yeah, he, I've seen him throw steaks into the crowd. Uh, he'll uh, if people like get on stage for too long, like I've seen him like body slam people like back into the crowd, like not like to try to hurt them, but like you know he's a big, he's a big wrestling guy. So you know if someone's like on stage that like meant to crowd surf, he'll literally pick them up and like scoop slam them back onto the crowd. Um, dude, he's he's a riot, man. He's just, I can see him doing right. something with WWE at one point, like you know, whether it's like a little like appearance or like whatever. Oh, I'm, you know sure. What I mean? I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, or something. Yeah, that, that guy is that guy is money, and Vince yeah. McMahon loves money. So yeah, 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 you know, for sure. Match made in heaven. But uh, dude, Brad, it, it's been such a blast having you on, yeah. chatting a little bit with us, man. Um, sure. I, I I can hopefully you know say that next year you know. With with new sainthood stuff coming out, you know I'm always super excited for it. You know everything you do, I'm I'm always in line for. Love awesome, the way man, you play. Man. You know, love love uh, love everything about uh, oh, you know same, music same. that you yeah. cultivate, man. So so I, I can really appreciate so you. And uh, um, hopefully, like I said, when you know when everything starts to kind of get better, uh, you know Caspian will be back out. You'll be uh, you know oh, out yeah. there make, oh. making making some thrill. You know, doing doing the damn thing. You know. We have a we have a, a Slack chat and they are the guys are just chomping at the bit. Oh, I'm I'm they, sure of it. They work so hard. They put this record out and like we got to do one tour on it, so they're just like ready to go. Like yep. on like global onslaught. You know what I mean? So they're, yeah. they're gonna bring their A game for sure. So if they come anywhere near you guys, you should come hang Dude, out. Dude, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we'll do. Sure. Love to hear it, man. Yeah. So again, I appreciate the time you taking, man. Uh, we will. Uh, Definitely catch up with you soon. Obviously, we got the season starting in January, so yeah, you know, hopefully wild, a couple baby. of months in, we'll <laughs> yeah. get you back on the pod, and we'll, uh, we'll you know we'll, we'll talk real real time hockey. Let's do it, man. Mikey it was really nice hanging out and chatting with you, dude. Good good to e meet you, you know. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's it's funny that it's taken this long, especially since Tom is a a lifelong friend at this point, and the, yeah. the fact yeah, yeah. that we haven't For crossed sure. paths yet is kind of bizarre to me. <laughs> it is. It is what we did now, and it's you know it's how twenty twenty of us to meet through a Zoom or whatever you know. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Thanks. All right, right. A lot of appreciate fun, it. Guys. Yeah, yeah. thanks again, man. You have a good rest of your day. All right. Cheers. You too. See you. See you.